Tulane scored once against Ohio State in the Buckeyes' 49-6 to victory on Saturday. But you know, I don't know, Bill Landis, and I'm Doug Maurice. There's still some people who are a little, a little jumpy about the Ohio State defense. This is a defense that is now missing its best player and maybe the best defensive player in the country in Nick Bosa. What should people be jumpy about bringing this Ohio State defense to Penn State next week to face a very good Penn State offense and a very good Penn State quarterback? Um, I think I think he could be jumpy only because you weren't going to learn a whole lot playing against Tulane. The, the one thing Tulane has done all year while being terribly inefficient and, and just not very good overall on offense is hit some big plays, and I thought that was limited today. They had the one that was like a 38-yard pass on the sideline. It was a really well-thrown ball, and it led to Tulane's only touchdown. So like, I didn't think Ohio State's defense was like leaky today, but – it was. It's essentially triple option. It's like triple option out of the spread. Um, so like, it's almost like playing Navy. You kind of just like throw it away. So if you're just thinking about TCU and what TCU was able to do against against Ohio State's defense, and now you're worried going into Beaver Stadium and playing against Trace McSorley and some of the skill they have, I think it's okay to be worried about that. I'm I am a little jumpy, or I would be jumpy, about containing Trace McSorley, who showed. Um, more of a willingness to run maybe than I thought he had when they played Illinois on Friday night. Things weren't really going well for Penn State's offense early on, so he just used his legs and made a lot of plays, and then they put up 63 points at the end of the night. Um, he is a great quarterback who can kill you if you let him get out of the pocket and, and make some plays. So I, I think it's okay to be concerned about that in a world where you don't have Nick Bosa chasing Trace McSorley around. Before the game, we had given our keys to the game, which is a new thing we do every Saturday at Cleveland.com in a video, and you had said focus on the defensive line without Nick Bosa, and I had said focus on the linebackers. I thought the linebackers missed a few tackles on Saturday, and the idea of the, of the Ohio State linebackers missing tackles on Trace McSorley in the open field and missing tackles on Miles Sanders, who is not Saquon Barkley because no one is Saquon Barkley, but they have a good running game at Penn State still. That, I think, is a little concerning to me. I still have some fundamental questions about the linebackers, just at a basic level. And then TCU did it. You mentioned the one play with Tulane down the field, but the just chuck it up and see what happens idea of, of deep balls. We know Penn State's going to do that. They've done that. They won the Big Ten two years ago doing that. And Damon Arnett gets a little handsy. Jeffrey Okuda didn't get his head around on the 38-yarder. I don't think the corners are bad at all. I think they're good. They're just not Marshawn Lattimore, Denzel Ward good. So I'll be very curious – Sometimes on, on some of those balls, you've got to be perfect. When the, when the quarterback puts it in the right spot, if you don't have perfect coverage, you're going to get beat. Penn State is capable of doing that, so I'm going to be watching the corner. So basically, I think the defense is fine other than the defensive line, the linebackers, and the secondary. I think those are three areas that people should be concerned about in the defense, and that's sarcasm because that's the whole defense. So, you know, I, they're, they're good. It's a good defense with talented players, but I just think there's little tiny things in all three areas. Yeah, I agree. The, the one thing that, that I think has been good, if you want to pick a good out of Ohio State's defense, is while they've given up yards, like TCU had 500 yards of offense. They didn't put score nine touchdowns. It was They had 28 points in that game, and one of them was a late touchdown when the game was kind of already in hand. So um, you wrote a thing this week about them sort of being like break and break, which is like they're going to give up big plays. But like I, they don't get scored on a ton for a team that gives up as many yards as they do. So maybe take some solace in that, that, that maybe Penn State will move the ball between the 20s, but when it gets into a short field, maybe Ohio State is stout enough and I still think Penn State's offensive line is is not what it should be. It's much better than it's been over the last few years, but I, but I think that's a vulnerability still. So I expect Penn State to move the ball, but I, I'm not totally sure at the moment that Penn State's going to be able to score at the rate it's going to have to score to keep pace with Ohio State's offense. And that's the thing. Ohio State doesn't have to stop Penn State. They just have to make sure Penn State doesn't outscore them, and Dwayne Haskins and this Ohio State offense is going to put up points. Bill Landis, Doug Lamarise, watch our coverage all week leading up to this really fun game Saturday. Ohio State at Penn State. See you later at Cleveland.com.